Welcome to Searching the Scriptures. Our Bible teacher will be Gunther von Haringa Sr. In this series of studies, we will be focusing on the book of Judges. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good evening and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is part 7 of chapter 2 in the book of Judges and today's date is August 15th, 2016. I'll read verses 22 to 23 of Judges 2. That through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of Jehovah to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore Jehovah left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. As I mentioned at the close of our last study, we've come down to this last phrase in Judges 2.22, whether they will keep the way of Jehovah to walk therein, which again is repeating the reason God tests His corporate people in general to determine whether their words match up with their actions. God underscores this reality in no uncertain terms in Mark 7, 6 through 7, which is quoting Isaiah 29, 13. Undoubtedly, this is one of the most convicting verses in the entire Bible, highlighting the fact that God looks right at the heart. Unlike man who can only judge externally in order to get to the truth of the matter, as 1 Samuel 16, 7b solemnly affirms, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but Jehovah looketh on the heart. So this is Mark 7, 6 through 7. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let's consider how God uses the four Hebrew words in this phrase in Judges 2.22, whether they will keep, which is Strong's number 8104, the way, number 1870 of Jehovah, 3068, and to walk, uh, Strong's number 3212. Together, these four terms appear in 13 verses. And we'll just take a look at a few of them. We read, for example, in Deuteronomy 8, 2, and 6, uh, this declaration. And thou shalt remember all the way which Jehovah thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of Jehovah thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. In verse 22 of Deuteronomy 11, 22 to 28, the word keep is actually doubled up in Hebrew. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's rendered as, for if ye shall diligently and keep. Uh, highlighting the supreme importance that God places on obedience, which God associates with love and cleaving to Him. Uh, this term, and to cleave, denotes the language of marriage. And it's actually also used in Genesis 2.24 as, and shall cleave. Uh, again, this is Deuteronomy 11, uh, 22 to 28. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, 
to love Jehovah your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will Jehovah drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness uh, and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For Jehovah your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing, if ye obey the commandments of Jehovah your God, which I command you this day, and a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of Jehovah your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. Please note the wonderful benefits that God connects with the blessings of obedience, and by contrast, the devastating consequences or curses linked to disobedience. Uh, this is also repeated in these next citations as well. In verse 16 of Deuteronomy 30, 16 to 20, Moses, under divine inspiration, repeats this same refrain, adding the terms life and death to blessing and cursing, highlighting the superiority of eternal life. In that I command thee this day to love Jehovah thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And Jehovah thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love Jehovah thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which Jehovah sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Please note the usage of the word cleave again in verse 20, indicative of marriage as God was actually married to the nation and the repetition of the promise given to the patriarchs that they would inherit the land pointed spiritually to the eternal kingdom of God in heaven. Joshua likewise repeats this directive in Joshua 22, 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses the servant of Jehovah charged you to love Jehovah your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. King David, in passing the crown to his son Solomon, repeats this singular command in verses uh, 3 and 4 of 1 Kings 2, 1 to 4. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, 
And he charged Solomon and his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou therefore, be thou, excuse me, be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of Jehovah thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that Jehovah may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Upon the completion of the temple, King Solomon in his dedicatory prayer stresses this injunction as well. In verse 25 of 1 Kings 8, 22 to 26. <clears throat> and Solomon stood before the altar of Jehovah in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Jehovah God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who has kept with thy servant David my father that thou promised him. Thou speakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Jehovah, God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promisedst him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speakest unto thy servant, David, my father. Lastly, God, in referring to the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 7 of Zechariah 3, 1 to 7, records this same exhortation. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of Jehovah. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And Jehovah said unto Satan, Jehovah rebuke thee, O Satan. Even Jehovah that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head, and clothed him with garments. And the angel of Jehovah stood by, and the angel of Jehovah protested, which is really the word testified, unto Joshua, saying, and of course Joshua here is a picture of Christ. Actually, Joshua's name uh, in Hebrew is Jehoshua, which is comprised of two Hebrew words. Um, uh, the first one is uh, Jehovah, and the other one is saves. In other words, Jehovah saves. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house." And thou shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. You might have noted from the preceding verses that God used certain men to pen these words, who spiritually 
are themselves types of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the Bible. Moses, Joshua, David, and Solomon. I recognize that I've spent some extra time dwelling on the above references, but I felt this was necessary as these passages reveal the paramount priority in God's mind with regard to His children, which is love or obedience. Hence, all the testing that believers have experienced throughout history, but especially at this time in history, living in the day of judgment, which only our generation has experienced. Obedience to the Word of God, mind you, not for salvation, but as a result of salvation, should also be the chief concern of every child of God, as God carefully instructs in Ecclesiastes 12:13, According to His promise in Philippians 1, 6, He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, until the day of Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 maintains, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, and that word matter is the Hebrew word debar, which is predominantly translated as word. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole word. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The next phrase that we want to investigate uh, is in Joshua 2.23. Therefore Jehovah left those nations. The three Hebrew words that make up this phrase are only found together in two other citations, uh, Judges 3.1 and Jeremiah 27.11 respectively. And again, um, therefore the Lord is uh, Jehovah, uh, 3068, left is uh, 3240, and those nations is 1471. I'll read Judges 3, 1. Now these are the nations which Jehovah left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. As in Judges 2.23, God is pinpointing His prerogative to test or prove Israel, since He had previously warned them what He would do if they failed to obey His commands, as we noted in verses uh, uh, 20b to 21 of Judges 2. Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Using these same three Hebrew terms, Jeremiah 27:11 is referring parabolically to the end of the church age in which the true believers were commanded to flee their local churches that God had abandoned and given over to Satan. This is what is meant in the historical context that the nations, including Judah and Jerusalem, along with the relatives of Israel, Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Zidon, were to surrender to Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian empire in accordance with the principle that judgment must first begin at the house of God, as we read in 1 Peter 4, 17. And this occurred on May 21, 1988, according to the biblical calendar. Then on May 21, 2011, exactly 23 years or 8,400 days later, God's judgment transitioned to every nation of the world, as both 1 Peter 4.18 and Jeremiah 25.29 underscore, as a prolonged day of judgment went into effect. Again, this is Jeremiah 27.11.
but the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith Jehovah, and they shall till it and dwell therein. So we've come down to this last phrase in Judges 2.23, uh, and we discover the same word driving them out as in verse 21 and in other passages that we have looked at previously, such as Numbers 33.51-56 and Joshua 23.13, without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Lord willing, we'll be learning more about these nations that God did not drive out when we continue our next study in Judges chapter 3. Thank you for joining us today for Searching the Scriptures. Until next time, to God be the glory.